Hello, today on Die Trying, I'm a fucking moron. Making a mirror in this style can be confusing, but the end results are extremely handsome. Like with any project, the first thing I had to do was cut some wood with a saw. So I set my table saw fence and ripped a straight side on all of my boards and then I could slide my fence over to about three inches. Now if you don't have a table saw, you can go right over to your home goods store and buy boards that are three inches or four inches wide depending on how wide you want your frame to be. As for me, I like to use reclaimed wood for almost all of my projects, especially if I'm going for that farmhouse style. Once I had all my boards ripped to my desired with, I could move on to cutting a channel in the back where the mirror will eventually sit. I lowered my blade to about half as high as my board is thick. And then I could slide my table saw fence over to a quarter inch. Now I could run one side of each one of these boards through the blade, leaving this cut parallel to the edge of the board. Once I've made my first pass, I take the same board and stand it up on its side using the board itself as a reference while resetting my table saw fence and blade. I want this cut to meet up at a 90 degree angle with the previous cut. So once I had the blade and the fence set, I made my cut and voila! Do magicians say voila? Anyway, now we have a channel that we're going to be able to sit our mirror into once we have our frame built. It's time to start cutting our 45 degree angles for all of our corners. I'm using a miter saw, but if you don't have one, you can go buy a cheap little miter box, and then you can just cut these angles by hand. Regardless of what you use, you're going to want to make your cuts at the perfect 45 degree angle. And when I say perfect, you're going to want it to be as perfect as possible. An accurate 45 is your best way to get a nice square frame because your two 45s are going to beat up at a 90. I went to Six Flags yesterday with my kids and I wore these shoes with no socks and they got soaking wet. And now they smell terrible. I can smell them where I'm standing. So I start by cutting my 45s on one side and then I can lay this up against my mirror to measure out the perfect length. Then once you've figured out how speed squares work, you can make a line and then bring it over to your miter saw and make your next cut. And now you should have the perfect 45s for your mirror frame. But be sure to lay all of this out before you nail it and glue it together so you can make sure it's all going to fit up properly. I grabbed my Craig jig next and then I drilled one hole in each corner. For a long time I didn't bother to use the actual Craig jig screws for this and I got away with it but I will say that the Craig jig screws work much better so if you're going to do this you might want to uh, go ahead and invest in those. I'm going to be nailing every one of these corners so one screw each should work. I went ahead and drilled the holes for the other sides and then applied some glue and inserted two more screws. That's what she said. <clears throat> If you wanted to, you could stop right here and you'd have a really nice mirror frame. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to frame our frame twice. I set my fence and ripped these boards for the inside and outside frame wider than the frame is deep. This will all make more sense soon. Just stick with me. So the idea here is to use the existing frame as our reference while marking out where we're going to make the cuts for the inside and the outside frames of this frame. Don't click off. This existing frame is one inch deep, which means the channel in the inside and outside frame is gonna have to also be one inch deep. Really, all I'm doing is framing this frame. So I set my blade to one inch high and then I pushed my fence over to a quarter of an inch, made my first pass, and then I could flip these over on their side and just like before, use these boards as a reference to set the blade in the fence so that I could cut another channel in all of these boards. Now to cut the 45s for the inside frame of this frame, you're going to have to cut the 45s backwards. Hopefully I do some sort of shitty drawing here that uh, explains it at least halfway. Typically when you're making a frame you'll have your 90 and your 45 will come through this way. But when you're making 45s for the inside, it's the same shape of a 45 but the channel is on the outside instead of the, on the inside. So when you go to cut them, it can be very confusing. 
I think that makes sense. Anytime I'm making a frame, I make sure to cut the first pass a little oversized and then take a little bit off at a time until I can bring it over and make sure that it's the perfect fit. Patience has always been something I struggle with, but it is key with a project like this where you need it to fit perfect. Once I had my inside and outside frame pieces cut, I can move on to gluing and brad nailing all of these on. And after two and a half hours of working on this project, I decided it was time for me to head in at 11.30 at night, which is very late for me. But before I went in, I wanted to take a second and check this thing out. So I took the mirror, placed it inside, and man was I proud. Proud of this. The following morning I went back out into my barn and I was able to find another mirror stored away in my trash hoard. I have so many mirrors that I found on the side of the road that I brought home and stacked up neatly in my barn that I can save and use for when I need to make a quick buck. These sell quickly and it's such an easy project. There was one problem though, this mirror is too big and I was going to have to cut it, which is something I have never been great at. But since I had no other choice, I grabbed my simple glass cutting tool and marked my mirror with a sharpie. Then using a straight edge as a guide, I rolled the glass cutter down my line. When doing this, you wanna make sure you only make one solid pass. Don't go back and try to make multiple passes. You're just gonna get a terrible line and when you go to break your glass, it's just gonna shatter. Once I made my pass, I slid a two by four right under the seam and I gave it a light tap and alakazam. Anyway, I applied a dark stain just to give it more of an antique look and then a couple coats of shellac. Then I moved on to cutting out a backing board out of eighth inch plywood using a combination of my table saw and miter saw. After that, the only thing left to do was secure this mirror and backing board into the frame. I started out by using half inch finishing nails, but then remembered that I had these little frame push-in doodaddies and decided to use them instead. Sprayed the whole thing down with Windex. And then I noticed I had this really long hair sticking out of my nose, so I plucked it. And then I posted it on Facebook Marketplace for $200. I'd be willing to take $150, which would put me at $50 an hour to make this. But if it doesn't sell in here, I'm totally fine with holding it for a craft fair. Okay, that's all. Here's a clip of me playing air guitar on the roof. Bye. Have a good dream.